You are listening to Blessed and Bossed Up, presented by Anchored Media, an entrepreneurship podcast for Christians all about how to make God the CEO of your business. Get ready to be inspired, challenged, but well-equipped to live and build your destiny his way. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Blessed and Bossed Up podcast. This episode coming out a little late. Your girl been on a struggle bus. <laughs> we had the MLK weekend, so the kids were home Monday. Shout out to everybody who's dealing with snow right now. They were home Monday, snowed, so they're home Tuesday, and then a half a day on Wednesday. I was like, Lord, the week's gone <laughs> at this point. And my oldest came home with a cold, gave it to me. Usually it's myself or my husband who catches whatever he brings back. And so last time it was BJ, this time it was my turn. (laughs) So I'm also dealing with the cold and try to tame this energetic toddler while he's home on his snow day and also enjoying it with them. I didn't go out in the snow because I wasn't feeling well, but we were able to, my husband took the baby outside and I walked from the window (laughs) and he took the baby outside to to experience his first snow. And then my oldest was building snowmans and all of those things. So it's been a lot happening in the house, fun things, chaotic things, but uh, things that delayed this podcast getting recorded nonetheless. But we are here and I'm ready to dive right in. Can we just have an honest conversation for a second? I get frustrated very often in this online space. The advancement of technology and social media and just this digital world is is there's so much opportunity in the sense of we have access to so many tools and resources. And I'm I'm specifically talking to the Christian community. I'm talking about us. We have so many resources and tools and access to things to help us learn more about Christ, to help us better understand the word, to help us learn how to apply the word. When God gives us assignments and things to create in business, we have access to so many tools and resources to be able to make those things happen. We have access to people that we otherwise wouldn't have come across, anointed people who uh, who have been called for such a time as this, who have gifts that that now can be applied and impactful on a larger scale due to the internet. Like it's just as beautiful. The opportunity is to be this beautiful digital landscape that accelerates and increases the impact of God's plan in the earth. That's, that's the exciting part. But we also know that with that great opportunity, there also lies an opportunity for corruption, an opportunity for perversion, an opportunity for deception, for false teachers, all of these things the enemy uses to destroy, right? His plan is to kill, steal, destroy. We understand that. Now, here's the root of my frustration and what I want to talk about on this episode I was having a conversation with a friend who's also a client and we're getting ready to release her podcast. And when we were talking about her vision for the show, and I'll tell you guys about the podcast once it's out, she was talking about just there's so many people in this space, of especially millennials, Gen Z, and whoever else comes up after that. It's this space where when you get saved, it's like, now what? And because in this generation, we do a lot of things digitally and online. I feel like millennials, I'm a millennial. I am about to be 32. I vividly remember going outside. Like when I was growing up, I went outside. I had to be in the house before the street lights came on. If I needed to call my mom, I didn't have a cell phone. I had to to use somebody's phone at a friend's house or something like that. I vividly remember life before technology and much of the memories of my childhood had nothing to do with the internet at all. It wasn't until maybe like middle school that I got my first cell phone and that was like a Nokia phone. And then I got the little razor. So again, beyond playing Tetris, we weren't doing anything on our phones and you had to pay for minutes. If you wanted to talk to somebody before a certain time, you had to pay for minutes, text messages you had to pay for. So we weren't even using them phones like that because our parents were paying the bills and they were not about to let us run their bill up 
trying to text, right? And then, <laughs> and then for the young folk, when we were texting, it wasn't like a full keyboard. It was three letters on one number and you had to press that number three times. So if you were pressing one, if you wanted to get the C, you had to press one three times to get the C. Like that's how we were texting. It was nothing like this. Instagram came out, I was in undergrad. So with this advancement of social media and all of that, I was an adult by the time that happened. And with that, and I'm glad God allowed me to be born when I was, because I could not imagine like my kids when they talk about their childhood and all of this technology they have access to. But with that, when I was gro- uh, getting saved and growing in my relationship with God, I went to a physical church. I bought a Bible. I bought books to learn more about the Bible. I bought commentary. So I wasn't looking online for resources like that because I didn't grow up with that. I wasn't immersed in that as much. And in technology, of course, over the years has continued to grow to where now I do use BibleStudyTools.com or Bible references or Bible Hub and all of these different digital spaces to help and technologies to help learn the text. But now People who are getting saved now, where our lives are consumed with the internet, where I get frustrated is that there is a lack of validating sources. When I went to school and I wrote a paper or anything like that, I had to cite my sources. And not only did I have to cite my sources, but my sources had to be credible. It had to be from scholarly journals and articles, not from gossip sites or random websites. Like it had to be a verified, credible source. Now, if it's trending, it must be true. And that is so dangerous to me. And it frustrates me. And my friend and I were discussing this because she was saying like a lot of people and she's a few years younger than me. So she's not 30 yet. And when we were having this conversation, she was saying that now people get saved, but it's like, now what? And then because of the times we in, usually the now what leads to the internet, which then puts you in this chaotic environment that you're not equipped yet to fully be able to divide or rightfully divide truth. And there lies the frustration that I've had as of late and the message that God wanted me to convey on this podcast or the instruction of this episode is the importance of protecting your attention. When I took my frustration to God, what he was showing me is that This online space, and I I think we're even seeing this right now, it's so chaotic. It's chaotic in as far as the world goes. It's chaotic as far as the church goes. It's chaotic as far as online business goes. And my heart breaks because I'm like, God, your people though, I personally don't care to flex my gift or my business acumen. There is enough of that. There's enough of this spiritual elitism that we see online where I'm more saved than you because I fast 24 seven. I ain't eight in the last year. And that's why I'm blessed and you not blessed because you want to eat and you ain't willing to da, 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 like, please, <laughs> please. I want to leave comments on half of the stuff that pop up over our timeline. Like, please just be quiet. How is this helping build believers? How is this winning souls? How is this sending people back to Christ so that God can renew them and transform them? How is this explaining, exemplifying, or exalting Jesus? So when I say my heart breaks, it it breaks. And not even just for those who are new to the faith, but those of us who have been saved for some time and are looking to grow spiritually. I'm like, God, how do we navigate this space In the midst of all of this noise, because it's just a lot. And I even personally take a lot of social media breaks. I am working to practice digital minimalism, (laughs) meaning that I want to spend the least amount of time online as possible. It's It's difficult by the nature of what I do. But just for me, I'm even finding ways to where I can operate in, in this in this way, in the way that I'm called to without being consumed and pulled into the culture of it. 
what God was sharing with me as I was venting to him, like I vented to you guys and preparing for this episode, what he shared with me is that the enemy has successfully unleashed an attack on attention. What's most important to the powers of this world is no longer just money, but it's data and attention. Data gives the intel on what will successfully steal your attention away from Christ. It's to get your attention away from truth. Because if your attention is taken away from truth, then the spirit that lives within you, it can become so diluted that you won't even recognize his guidance or his help. And what was interesting is I started to look up the definition of attention and I specifically looked it up in the uh, American Psychological Association because I wanted to know attention as it relates to the study of the mind and what that meant. So it says that uh, attention is a state in which cognitive resources, so mental resources, are focused on certain aspects of the environment rather than on others. And... The central nervous system is in a state of readiness to respond to stimuli. Now, this definition has two very important parts. The first part that it points out is that when something has your attention, it has your focus at the expense of something else. The second part is that by the nature of something having your attention, your body is already prepped and ready to respond to it. If your attention is on a lie, because we know the enemy is the, is the father of lies. He is a lying liar who lies. <laughs> if your attention is on a lie, then by nature of that, having your attention, you are disregarding the truth. Now, what has our attention is by choice. And even in our bonus episode, we're talking about battlefield of the mind. A big part of this chapter is about choice, but we'll get to that then. What you choose to pay attention to is up to you. But I'm highlighting the definition of attention so that you understand the totality of the choice that you're making. So again, if you choose to allow a lie to have your attention, then you are by definition also choosing to disregard the truth. So as a Christian and an individual who has decided that you are going to follow Jesus and give your life to God and totally surrender your will, your way and everything to him. If you choose to pay attention to gossip, then you are also choosing to disregard who you say you are and the principle, the truth for us not to be individuals who do that. How can you say that you're doing business God's way and you're giving him this promise that he's going to be the CEO, but you give your attention to content about being self-made? You're directly working against what you say you're working towards. And I don't think that it's intentional. And that's why God This episode is about the specific attack on attention because you have to understand what attention is to understand why the attack is effective. And in today's society, things move so fast with the advancement of technology and all of this. It moves so quickly that we do a thing before we realize the impact of a thing. And so the goal of this episode is to slow you down enough and to bring your attention to a very intentional, effective, and specific attack that is keeping way too many believers bound. Remember, the first part of the definition of attention discussed how when you are focused on one thing is at the disregard of the other. The second part says that by something having your attention, what else happens is that the central nervous system is in a state of readiness to respond to stimuli. Your central nervous system is has the responsibility of receiving, processing, and responding to information. So when something has your focus, it disregards something else, and then your body is ready to respond to what it is that you're focusing on. And this is effective but by the enemy because not only can he present you with lies that cause you to disregard the truth, but then your body is now prepped to respond to those lies. This episode is brought to you by NetSuite. 
Many of us, we are not only business owners and entrepreneurs, but we wear many hats. And for us, it's especially important to put things in place to, as our business grows to a certain size, cracks don't start to emerge. Or we don't have too many manual processes that are not the best use of our time. If you found yourself in this space where things you used to do in a day are now taking a week and it's taking forever to close your books, if this is you, you should know these three numbers. 37,000, 25, 1. 37,000. That's the number of businesses which have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. 25, NetSuite turns 25 this year. That's 25 years of helping businesses do more with less, close their books in days, not weeks, and drive down costs. One, because your business is one of a kind, so you can get a customized solution for all of your KPIs in one efficient system with one source of truth. Manage risk, give reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything that you need to grow in one place. It is so important, again, as us business owners who wear many hats, to where we need our information in one place, in a centralized location, so that we can make better decisions for our businesses. Right now, download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance. Absolutely free at netsuite.com slash blessed. That's netsuite.com slash blessed to get your own KPI checklist. netsuite.com slash blessed. This episode is brought to you by Factor. Get started on your resolutions with Factor so that you're ready for the new year. I know for me, I am trying to maximize my time without compromising the things that matter the most, which is eating well, not just for me, but for my family. Factors ready to eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and it sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, the prep work, the cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, you can include options like keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. Plus, over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Forget those frantic lunch preps, rushed dinners, because child, I'm guilty of that. Factors two-minute meals are your secret weapon in the new year. Fuel up fast with restaurant-quality meals, all delivered right to your door. Factor now even offers loads of snack options like breakfast, smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep going no matter what's on the menu. Skip the overpriced takeout trap because we know everything is expensive out here. Factor is cheaper and is way more delicious than that nasty, greasy takeout. Get chef-crafted, restaurant-quality meals delivered right to your door. They're ready to heat and eat in just two minutes, which means more time for you. And if you need a special occasion meal, Gourmet Plus is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale options done easily. Head over to factormeals.com slash blessed50 and use code blessed50 to get 50% off. That's code blessed50 at factormeals.com slash blessed50 to get 50% off. So using the same example of gossip, let's say the shade room has your attention, a, a gossip page. Now, you're disregarding the truth at that moment by allowing it to have your attention. The truth that this is ungodly, but you're going to consume it anyway. So you've already made a decision that you're going to give your the enemy your attention in this way. Now, by definition, your body is prepared to respond to what you're giving your attention to. Now, if the enemy is successful in what he's directed your attention to, then how you would respond is commenting on it engaging with it, sharing it. So now you're further perpetuating something that is not in alignment with the will of God. So now you're an active participant in the enemy's plan and not God's. You see how easily that happens? How easily we drift into, this is, in my opinion, one of the biggest drivers of the lukewarm lifestyle is by us not standing on business as it relates to God's business. And these platforms are designed in this way. 
They're designed to get your attention, to get you to engage and to keep your attention. They are designed that way. And the enemy is utilizing them to keep you bound, to keep you one foot in and one foot out, to keep you lukewarm, to keep you saying that you agree with God or that you're a Christian and you're going to live for Jesus. But your actions say that actually the world is your master, not the Lord. And I have to be blunt like that so that we really understand the seriousness of it because it happens so easily and so smoothly. And again, I want to highlight this issue and highlight this attack on our attention so that we can choose to do better because we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Like the spiritual warfare is deep, but the the solution is simple. So let's talk about the solution for a second. So Tatum, I hear you. I understand. I recognize how powerful what I give my attention to is. So what do I do differently so that I don't unintentionally slip in to this pattern? And the answer is simple. It's in Proverbs 4, 23. And it says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. And I love this elaboration from gotquestions.org. It says, these words of wisdom from King Solomon emphasize the importance of protecting our innermost being. Our heart is the source of our thoughts, attitudes, beliefs, and actions. Therefore, it is crucial to guard our hearts above all else. Guarding our hearts is about protecting ourselves from external and internal factors. We must be mindful of the things we think about the things we set our affection on, and the things we give our attention to. Negativity, bitterness, and anger can take root in our hearts and lead to sinful behavior. For this reason, the Apostle Paul said, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Guarding your heart means chooses to focus on godly thoughts, as well as seeking wisdom and guidance from God. When we guard our hearts, we take responsibility for our mental, psychological, and spiritual well-being. In doing so, we protect ourselves from sinful influences that impede spiritual progress. By guarding our hearts, we become who God designed us to be. I'm going to stop there and link the full article in the show notes with all the scripture references, and it, it goes much deeper in its elaboration But I wanted to just read that because it just perfectly describes what it means to guard your heart. And again, I'm presenting that as the solution. The enemy's attack is on our attention. Our response to that attack, because we already won. It's not about win or losing. The victory is ours. How we stand on our victory in this way is by guarding our hearts. How that translates practically As we operate and function in this digital modern world, in my opinion, first, you got to understand what you like. (laughs) We all have sins that we enjoy in particular. I'm not a smoker, never have been. I've smoked before in my life, but I never was like totally into it fully. So if something catches my attention online about smoking, let's say a new I don't know, some new type of weed came out. That's not something that will have me disregard truth or move me to action outside of the will of God because it's not something that I particularly like anyway. Now, if for you, you know that that is a sin that you're bent towards, then you need to utilize like these algorithms. You know how they use cookies and all of that to track our digital footprint so they could sell us on something that we may have showed interest to at one point. Use that in your advantage to where set the algorithms, especially with TikTok, you can do this easier to where it's like, don't show me this type of content. Don't show me that type of content. So it just doesn't push it to you when you're on search engines like YouTube and things like that come up because it will, especially if it's something that you participated in previously. Don't show me this video, block this type of content, whatever parental controls, y'all, whatever it may be. Put the safeguards in place that you can control. Let's say you listened to the first episode this year where God is calling a lot of people to speak and you are nervous about coming into this online sphere late 
in quotations, and building a brand here now. You may need to put controls in place that are blocking you or feeding into your discomfort about being obedient or your fear about stepping out on faith. Something all of us need to pay attention to in general are just the things that we watch and we listen to, period. The things we watch online, the things that we consume, we just have to pay attention to it and find pure alternatives to everyday things. That's an assignment for all of us. Something that I've started doing recently is listening to a lot more Christian rap. Y'all know I've been vocal on here from day one that I'm a Jay-Z fan. Jay-Z does not rap anything that is consistent with the, the principles of Christ. He doesn't. And as a business owner in particular, who's called to do business God's way, sometimes if I'm being honest, the messages that I'm rapping with these lyrics are contradictory to the way that I, that I want to do business. So I can't listen to that the way that I may have felt freer to in previous seasons or before I gave my life to Christ. A lot of the rap music now is just trash. The female rap, the male rap, everything. It's just garbage that we're feeding ourselves and that the enemy can use to drive us to action. So something I've been doing again is just listening to more Christian rap, more Christian. My husband sent me a playlist. It was like Christian soul music or whatever. I'm like a 90s R&B girl. So I love a good old school type of sound. And I was listening to these songs like, dang, this, these are beautiful songs. They, their messaging is consistent with God. They're not necessarily fully worship songs, but they are. it's good music without compromising the integrity of what I'm lending my ears to. So for all of us, we just have to be mindful, especially in this season, in this market of all of the advancements of technology and social media and all of that, we have to be especially mindful in this season. So that's it for this episode. Take this revelation. Again, we're highlighting the attack of the enemy. We're highlighting why it's effective in order for you to go to God and for him to give you the specific instruction on how to make sure that you don't fall into this trap. So that's it for this episode. Any resources that I mentioned, you can find them in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.